Hi guys, I'm Natalie from So Hungry Hippie, and I am going to get this going today. I'm going to show you how we can make really simple, fast decorations. I love these for any time of year, any holiday, but I wanted to whip a couple of the red, white, and blue out for July 4th, especially because right now it's hard to get <laughs> decorations. For some reason, I think shipping and cargo and all of that. So I started making this one last night. And I just really love it. Even in solids, it looks good. Now, I do want to say I have a paper pattern available for, I think it's $5 on my website. And it does have the pattern pieces. If you're like me and you like paper patterns because... They're in your view. They're there all the time. You can just pull it out and start using it. Um, if you prefer PDF, the PDF version is free. I know that there are lots of bunting tutorials online, but I've been making them for about 12 years now, and I think I've got it down to be pretty simple. And I like to do scrappy buntings as well, where you patchwork or piecework your fabric and then cut out your triangles. It's super fun. So both the PDF and the paper pattern have three sizes, and I've made all three sizes many, many times. The large is about 10 inches tall and wide, so those flags are quite large. I recommend those if you're doing like an outdoor fair or event where it's gonna be sort of higher up because they'll make a better impact that way. If you're just putting them in your home like I do, I like the medium size. It's my go-to. It's my favorite. And then I also have the mini, which darn it, I left the mini downstairs. I have it up permanently in my bathroom. Just, I don't know, you need some cheer in there, you know? And they are about three and a half inches tall and a little less than that wide. So they're super cute and fun. I have mine on my kind of curio case. It's, it's cute. All right, so let's get started. What you'll need Hi, hi you guys, hi, hi Susanna, hi Melanie. Uh, yes, I'm so thankful for this Friday because it's nice and cool, it's about 70 degrees, it's just perfect. And we're about to head into a heat wave for the next few days, so I'm so glad it hasn't hit yet. <laughs> um, what you'll need if you're just doing a basic bunting is just some quilting cotton. You can use your scraps, you can cut cut up clothing if you want to. I mean, I've made it out of canvas, I've made it out of clothing, I've made it out of vinyl, but I'm just gonna show you the super simple way with cotton, quilting cotton. And I'm using these Kona solids because I love them and I was cutting bundles yesterday. If you saw me on Instagram, uh, I posted a like speed it up, sped up, speed it up video this morning. Uh, it was just like one of those moments where you feel blissful because <laughs> you're doing something you love and the weather's right and the kids are busy and it's all good. Uh, most often for bunting, I use Wright's prepackaged extra wide double fold bias tape. <laughs> and it has to be all those things because I bought Wright's binding before and it didn't say extra wide double fold and it was the wrong kind. So you do want extra wide double fold. So it's like this. And it might say, I think it says bias tape on the package actually. However, you can make your own. And this is what I did for this one. I cut my strips at either two or two and a half inches. It depends how wide you want your uh, tape at the top or your ribbon at the top. This one is two and a half inches and you just do the same exact thing as you always do for binding. Fold it in half and press. And then we're going to fold these edges in and press. And then we're going to fold again and press. And then as you can see, your flags will slip into that open edge and then we'll close it later. So that's what you do if you want to use up your fabric stash. Um, okay, let me move this out of the way a second. I'm going to show you for each flag, you need two pieces of fabric. I'm not a fan of one fabric flags. They don't last long and they look kind of cheap. You can't wash them unless you want all those frayed up stringies everywhere, which I don't for bunting. I want to be able to use this year after year after year. And believe me, I, I do. 
for birthdays for my kids. Um, I made one out of BDU camouflage uniforms for my husband when he came back from Iraq and it, I appliqued welcome home on it. I still have that. It's in our trunk of keepsakes. Uh, so you, you really can use these for lots of different occasions and out of lots of different materials. I just read this morning that textile waste is one of the worst polluters of the planet. So I'm always looking for ways I can reuse uh, fabric or clothing or whatever, rather than just dump it at Goodwill, you know? So you're gonna put your fabrics right sides together. And the diagrams in the PDF and the paper pattern show you exactly these steps. So you don't have to worry too much about memorizing any of this. Ah! Let's bring it over into the view. And then what we're gonna do is just sew down side, pivot with the needle down in the fabric and up the side. You wanna leave this top portion open for turning. Hi Rose, good to see you, hi Debbie. Hi, Lisa. Oh, from North Carolina. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, I love that moon glow. I, it's just such my favorite. Love it, love it, love it. What she's talking about is the moon glow vinyl that's sort of new in my shop. I'm going to be carrying a lot of colors, and uh, it's just, it cuts like butter. It sews like butter. It's just awesome. It's one of my favorites. Yes, yeah, and... That's right. I should say instead of bunting, I think is what they call it in England. And I lived there for so long, I've adapted some of the vocabulary. Um, but I think here you would call it garland or maybe flags, flag banners or <laughs> I don't know, something like that. All right, let's head over and sew this up. I'm just, I sew using a quarter inch seam allowance and a stitch length, I'm at two and a half millimeters. So I just sew all the way down. Be careful not to uh, pull on your fabric. I leave the needle down, raise my foot, pivot, and sew up the other side. And it's that simple. Now, I like a uh, bunting with nine flags as a minimum. I just like the odd number. I think it looks really good. It's perfect in a window. If you hang it up in your window, like I like to. And, oh, there's a train. Um, I didn't bring out my pointy tool. Turn. I probably have a, a, paint, a paintbrush somewhere. Um, that's what I get. Well, I had it here and then I cleaned up and organized. <laughs> so you're gonna flip it so it's right sides out and then use your pressing tool or your chopstick and push out that bottom corner. You'll get it nicer than I have just now, but you know what I mean, you know what to do. And then I kind of spread it open like this when I put it on my pressing mat. Oh, let me get, let me um, move this. Or, there we go. All right, so I place it on the pressing mat and go like this, just so those seams are really nice and crisp. I'm happy that my buntings are viewable from either side. When I have been in short supply, of a favorite fabric, I'll put the favorite on the front and then even muslin on the back. If I know it's going in a window um, facing one direction or or on a wall where you never see the back side, you can always use a scrap fabric there or a muslin. So there is the finished flag. So let me move these guys. And as you can see here, I already sewed a bunch of these in. However, <laughs> this is how they are placed inside. So I'm gonna take these clips off. I also like to use the clips because I used to use pins and I, I don't know, just wasn't, not as good as clips. 
So I like to place my bunting close. And my rule of thumb is a finger width away from each other. I don't like the big spaces, but that's just personal preference. You might like that, and that's fine. So I put mine in like this, and I'm, see, here's the uh, fold. Put it up to the fold, fold your binding over, and then use a clip to hold it in place. And I, I always press it again when I put that flag in just to make sure it's good. So this one is open, finger width apart, put it up to the fold, and then I'm gonna press this. And there we are. These I find are also really good sellers if you do craft fairs. I know it's kind of, uh, you wouldn't think that they would be, but when I used to do craft fairs and shows, these, these always went. And I think fabric makes a big difference. Bright, colorful, you know, happy, and have, some, have them hanging up so people know what they are. Don't just have them flat on a table. I used to put mine in front of the table too. Okay, so that's how you put it together. And then when you're sewing this closed, I've already sewn most of this garland. So let's start where I finished last time. And you're just gonna sew, catching that open edge and the flags at the same time. And I, you know, this fabric, this is not cut on the bias because I made my own tape, but it shouldn't matter. Even if you do cut it on the bias, and oftentimes that's why I just use the package is because then you can iron it into a curve. If you're making a swag in your window, it's really pretty, the bias tape. It's easier and it's cute, but this works too. I should also say I've learned over the years to leave about 10 inches on the ends so that this can be tied and put on a nail or tied around a curtain finial or curtain rod. Um, about 10 inches on each end is the best, I think. Isn't that pretty? I'm going to put this in my sewing porch. I just love it. So let me show you really quick how I do my patchwork ones. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Katie. Um, <laughs> Rose. <laughs> Tell that husband and give you some free time, right? This is me time. So I just grabbed fabrics I really love. And of course, you probably guessed it. This is Jennifer Paganelli fabric. So I'm going to make a garland or a bunting with Jennifer's fabric. So in general, you can see some examples in the pattern, but what I like to do is to make sure that each fabric has a different width. I, I don't know why, but I like, I like it when there's some uh, different widths going on. When they're all exactly the same, it just doesn't speak to me as much. So I'll lay my flag down and decide how much I want of each fabric. And I think I want a little less of this. And there's no formula to this. This is just, you know, whatever you prefer. I think I want the most of this up here. Yeah, something like that. So now I'm going to sew those fabrics right sides together, and then I'll cut out my triangle. And then for the back side, normally I would do another patchwork uh, flag, but for this demo, I'll just use, you know, a solid for now. And I'll show you, it's totally fine. So let's, let me get a cleaner edge on this one. And I'm gonna sew these two right sides together. Quarter inch seam allowance, just like quilting. And I always make my patchwork bigger than the triangle. 
I just want lots of room to play around and, you know, not try to cut any corners. And then I'm going to iron this seam towards the darker fabric because you don't want any shadowing. I don't think you do. Where is everyone at today? Anybody going anywhere for the fourth? Because we're not. <laughs> so let me live vicariously through you. I'm going to press it and then press it open. Hi, Shirley from North Carolina. Now, I should also say, if you want to, and I've done this, it's fun, you could, like, turn it. With prints, you'd notice that. With a solid, you're not going to notice. But feel free to just totally play around. You're making your fabric. And you can always trim down your seam allowance later. Like that one, I took a really big one because that wasn't a straight edge. So now it's good. Okay. Oh, color choices. Yes, I think we do need a live about color and fabric coordination. I always tell people that I'm just going by my gut and I'll mix, intermix fabric lines all the time. I rarely buy a whole collection of something or make a quilt with just one type of fabric in it. Like, for instance, you know, one, what is that called? Yeah, like one collection quilt. Never. I don't think I've ever done that. But that's because I kind of just didn't know any better. I do what I do. I, I'm going to make what I like. And if I want to mix an Alice in Glass with a Tula Pink, with a Jennifer Paganelli, with a Lisa Flower, I do it. I just think that we should be able to do whatever we want. And um, so what I'm saying is my color choices are very much instinct. But I have found that it always looks best if you do similar tones. So I never would put a pastel collection with a bright, bright, bold collection. It just, it would look off for some reason. So that's a good idea for a future live. I would love to talk about that. I love color. I have it everywhere in my house. I'm constantly changing it. Uh, I just, it makes me happy. I know the millennials are really into that kind of monochrome minimalist look. And I just, I like how it looks on my phone, but I couldn't live like that. I would be depressed. <laughs> Sorry if you're a millennial. <laughs> Maybe you're like me on the cusp. You like a whole bunch of different things, but you want to live with one kind of thing. I just totally cut that wrong. So I'm going to, go this way like you should when you use a rotary cutter. Sorry, I was chatting. Not paying attention. So that that's my pattern piece, by the way. And I, I usually, if I'm going to use something over and over, I just get some poster board and cut it out to be stronger or laminate the pattern piece. But there's the flag. So you can see it's more dimensional. It's fun. Pretend this is the right side. Solids to me, I mean, technically there's a right side, but I just say whatever. <laughs> Both sides look right to me. Put your flags right sides together, and then let's sew it down. At the bottom, I keep my needle down and lift the foot and pin it. And there we are. And then if you happened to take an extra big seam allowance, you just, you know, we're watching Netflix or something, just trim it. It'll be easier to turn. So then right sides out. And once I get my pointing tool, this will look so good. Oh my gosh, waiting on a hurricane. 
Oh, how'd I miss that news flash? Where are you at? Let us know. I can't see your name. Um, on, on stream on YouTube and my Facebook group as well as my Facebook page. And for some reason, I can only see names on the Facebook page. If you're on there, So Hungry Hippie Facebook page. It's technology. It's a learning curve, a big old learning curve. Okay, so there's that flag. It's super cute. And I'll just do a bunch of those using up scraps. And I mean, I think a, a scrappy solids bunting would be so pretty. <gasps> I need to do that. That goes on the list of 85,000 things to do. So yeah, there you have it. I have a vinyl bunting, which is even easier because you don't have to turn it right sides out uh, on my YouTube channel. If you want to check that out, it's, it's probably a couple years old. So what I usually do is I click to videos and then I scroll down to find the older videos. Um, what else do you, what do you, what other questions do you have? What can I answer? Even if it's not about the bunting, uh, what else can I help you with? I'll just re reiterate my 4th of July bunting. I'm going to put this up on my front porch as soon as we're done. <laughs> hey, Crystal. Yes, I know you're all about color too. I love everything you make. It's always so good. Crystal was one of my first friends uh, that sewed and had a craft booth at our local uh, Air Force Base and got me kind of thinking like, oh gosh, this is like, awesome and my passion i love it it's rose i'm in tampa oh rose stay safe all these hurricanes all this crazy weather is just making me contemplate everything <laughs> it's just so crazy i have a lot of friends um not a lot of, I have a lot of friends i have some friends in miami and i'm always worried about them during hurricane season and family in the Dominican Republic. She's like, I don't know. Yes. Oh, I know who that is. That's Piera. <laughs> oh, you must have missed it, Tina. Um, I can show you again really quick if I have a binding. Okay, so this is a binding. It's in the beginning of the show, but you have your binding like this, right? Or I could just use one that's already made. Jeez. So the shorter edge is face up on your workspace. And then what you're going to do is open it like this. Slide your flag in to touch the fold. Slide it down. Put clips there to hold it in place. And then you're going to sew along this open edge all the way down the binding or whatever you want to call this, the string, to secure your flag in and sew that closed at the same time. It's awesome. It's super fast. And that's in the pattern too. Remember, the PDF is free at SewHungryHippie.com. You'll have to click to PDF Sewing Patterns. And it's there towards the bottom. I'll try to move it up later today. Um, and then if you want the paper pattern, I think it's $5. And my paper patterns ship free all the time. So, you know, you pay $5 and shipping is $3. <laughs> it's like, it's not meant to be a moneymaker. It's meant to help everyone make this simple stuff because I think, I'm a believer that when you start making simple projects, it builds your confidence to do the hard things. And the more you believe in yourself, the better you're going to become at sewing. It's a life philosophy. Tell me again how you put the strap on. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think you might have just seen me do that. So you're opening that binding and you slip the flag in to touch the fold, fold it back down, and then sew the edge closed. And you can go back and rewatch this in the beginning if you need to. I, it's a little bit more in depth, but anyways. No, no sorries. It's all good. You're here. Um, would you ever use that steam -a seam I guess you can if you want. There's nothing wrong with that for sure. You know where I use steam -a seam is when I do key fobs. I know Crystal Humble is going to be like, you don't need that. <laughs> and you don't. But if you like a method and it's easier for you, then use it. 
So when I'm doing a key fob, you know, you have your webbing. I put the, the steam seam down and then I put the fabric down with the folded edges tucked over under and then I iron it and then I sew it. Because for so long when I was beginning sewing, I would get rumples in there when I would attach it to the webbing. So that's where I use steam seam a lot. But Melanie, it's a great idea. If you want to use it, do it. I think that's fabulous. No worries, Tina. I'm glad you can wash this on your lunch break. That's pretty cool. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. I love that white glossy and I'm almost out of it. Uh, I, I don't know. It just reminds me of Barbie for some reason, like, and Nancy Sinatra. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Fidgety. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a great way to keep things from being fidgety, exactly. That's true. Yes, yes, Rose, you could use double-sided tape if that helps you, for sure. Yeah, tuck that in there. That's a great idea too. See, y'all are so smart. Why don't you come here and teach me? Yes, exactly. What a great, <laughs> what a great philosophy. I love it. Yes. Excellent. All right. Well, I think that's it. That was a really quick uh, sewing live, but sometimes we need the quick ones, right? I do want to show you something before I go. I don't know if I'll do another live. Oh, why did that happen? Okay, there we go. I don't know if I'll do another live tomorrow or if I'll just save this for next week, but I have discovered making t-shirt skirts. Not my idea, but I wanted to do a shirt waist. And let me tell you, oh my gosh, these are so comfortable. I can't even, like I'm a person, I don't like wearing shorts. I don't like showing my bare legs in public. I'm white and pasty. And um, I just prefer to have pants on in public. So at home, I will throw on a skirt and be out in the yard tootling around or whatever. And these are so comfortable. So I had to piece this because my original t-shirt wasn't big enough. But this is my husband's t-shirt he never wore that I just cut the top off and then added more t-shirt material here and then shared the waist. And by shirring, it just I just put elastic thread in my bobbin and then sewed 10 rows. And that's that. And I wanted to show you guys that before we get into the real heat wave here in the Midwest. So I'll either do an extra live or I'll have that in something else for next week because it's so, so simple and so comfortable. This adjusts to your body and it's not constricting. It's even better than a normal elastic waist. <laughs> It's just incredible. I love it. So I've made three of them for me for the next few days to wear because I am not about to be suffering. Oh, hi, Emily. Oh, I, I'm so glad you found my easy zipper case pattern. That's one of my favorites. I love it. Um, okay, so thread when piecing. So it's funny because out of necessity, I used Guterman thread, all-purpose thread, for almost everything. And I think it's because when I started sewing, I couldn't afford very much. So I could not afford expensive quilting thread. I have come to realize that certain threads can be better for piecing quilt tops. And one of them is a deco bob. It's super, super uh, tight and skinny, and it makes your seams just perfection. Uh, and I think it's by Sulky. It's called Deco Bob. And then the other one, Orifil cotton, you know, the orange spools are really famous. I've heard those are wonderful to piece. I've only used it a handful of times because my machine, not this one, my Janome loves it, but my other machine, my Bernina does not love it. So, you know, I think you have to kind of play around and find what you like best. I don't think a thread will determine how awesome your quilt is. I think that's you. So let me just say that. Oh, good. Okay. I will show that soon. I really wanted to get that out. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's too easy. 
Does that matter? <laughs> Yay. Yay, I'm glad, Lisa. Um, favorite cutting mat and ruler. My cutting mat has some bumps in it. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I know what you're talking about. And I have yet to try this tool that is supposedly going to smooth the mat out because sometimes I get that too. Uh, but I have to say this Havel's pink cutting mat and the Havel's rulers, or I mean, what is this called? Rotary cutter are by far my favorite. I have had much less problems. I <laughs> can't even speak. I don't have problems with the Havel's mats. And I don't know, they feel a little thicker than other ones. Um, I mean, I've had this one, what, three years going? And I abuse it. I mean, sometimes you see me ironing on my wool mat, on top of my cutting mat, which is so bad, but it doesn't do anything. There's nothing wrong. And then rulers, I like Havel's. They have quite a few. And then I also like the Omni Grid clear with the yellow. I tried the neon marking rulers and they made me crazy. Like I just couldn't see it as well. That could be a me thing though. <laughs> so Havels and Omni Grid for the rulers. Um, ooh, so I'm supposed to do a t-shirt quilt this summer for my nephew. Or is he a nephew? It's my cousin's son. I think maybe that's cousin. I don't know how that family tree stuff goes, but it's family. So I got to do him a, a t-shirt quilt. So, okay. I think I've got everybody. I'm so grateful that you were here with me. Thank you. This has been so fun. I never expected these lives to be so fun. And I really look forward to them now every week. So thanks. Thanks for being here. Feel free to share. Um, every like helps me. Uh, I was just telling somebody the other day, don't run ads. So you guys are how this page grows or my company grows or whatever you want to call it. It's weird to, to call it that, but that's what it is, I guess. It's me. So um, I appreciate that. I appreciate the likes and the shares and whatever else you do. And I will see you soon. I will post when I'm going to do this t-shirt skirt. You can do it super easy. You just need elastic thread. And I'll post where to get that when I, when I do this. All right. See you soon. Have a great weekend and a great fourth. And let me see your buntings if you make any. All right. Bye.